Are we good? Hello! Welcome to Ask the Maester Live, where every week around this time, roughly, I will ask you, uh, you will ask me questions and I will answer them, uh, questions about Game of Thrones in general and uh, the latest episode, which was the season premiere of season seven. Let's go! Um, let's see, what do I want to ask for? Um, one of the questions I answered that I, uh, that I liked was, is Sansa, the Sansa John friction, is John right, is Sansa right? Who's right? Um, so, uh, I think I answered this pretty well in my column, which is they're both right, but they're going about it the wrong way. The thing you have to re remember about their relationship is Sansa doesn't know John at all. They were not close when they were together at Winterfell. Then, like all the Stark kids, they were separated. Um, she doesn't know him. She doesn't know anything about him. And her first interaction with him after he was resurrected was like him being like, yeah, I'm not going to fight anymore. I'm just done. And then she had to convince him to do it. So from her perspective, after she, after she says to him, you know, Winterfell is our home. It's Arya's home. It's Bran's home. It's Rickon's home. Uh, it's our home for thousands of years. I'll take it with or without you. And then him being spurred to fight from her perspective to be then told, why should I listen to you? That must be like, that really would drive any person crazy. And if anybody else had given John similar advice, if Davos had given him that advice, I think people would be much gentler or even not have any problems with what Davos said. Um, you know, John doesn't have to execute Alice and Ned. He, there's a lot of other things which I lay out in the column that he could do that aren't, that wouldn't go against his heroic nature. John's a, the hero of the story, um, and I don't think it's unfair to just want him to be better than, smarter than Ned, more prudent than Rob, just a better king. And also, like, you know, call a small council meeting. Like, run a small council meeting. Don't head into court in front of everybody and go, I made a decision, big decision, about what we're going to do about the traitors, guys, that I haven't discussed with anybody. Like, discuss this behind the scenes and don't air this out in front of everybody. Um, uh, that's, I mean, that's just my perspective. That's, like, the perspective of a person who, like, watched 60 episodes in a very short amount of time. I think Mallory and I have talked about this on Binge Mode. Mallory talked about this on Bill's Pod recently, which is that Sansa really comes up she really rises high in, in a rewatch like that. Um, you realize how much she's been through. And also, I think for a lot of people, like the most annoying character like in any story is the character that's most like a real person. You know, And Sansa was most like a real person. She was just a teenage girl who liked boys and fashion and famous people. And now she's a player in the game. But she's not a player in the same way that Arya and Brienne are, where these, it's kind of like this archetypical badass fighter woman. She's doing, uh, she's working with what the weapons she has. And I think um, she's unfairly uh, criticized for that. Uh, Gypsy Smoke asks, is a house required to have a traditional family structure in place before, prior to receiving wards from other houses? No. You just receive a ward. Um, people say, well, the, the Ned Theon warding went really bad. Yeah, that's because they, they held Theon too close. You know, the relationship is supposed to be um, you're a hostage. The ward is a hostage, essentially. Um, you treat them with all courtesy, as um, Jamie promised Edmure. You know, he said, "I'll take you to Casterly. You'll be treated with courtesy. You just can't leave." But you don't treat him as part of the family, which is what Ned did, and that's what caused a lot of the problems that happened later on down the line. Um, Michael, why did Michael? Oh, sorry. Burp, 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 burp. Do you want to go back to the dragon stuff? Sure. John asks, why was Dragonstone so wide open? How long has it been vacant? Well, we don't know, but as I said in the column, Stannis couldn't really uh, afford to spare men. But let's assume that he left 25, 50 men to hold the castle. Um, once Stannis died, there's nothing holding them to that place. And when you see Danny's armada appear on the horizon and there's three dragons like f wheeling overhead, uh, do you really want to stick around and be like, I she'll be cool, right? This will be good. We, we surrender. No, I'd be like, yeah, I'm, 
I'm out. Peace. Uh, what should Danny do next? This is a question that we're going to answer in a shoot around uh, column on theringer.com, which is a really good website. Um, I think Danny should hit Dragonstone like as soon as she can. I mean, hit King's Landing as soon as she can. It's right there. Uh, Euron's fleet is theoretically trapped in Blackwater Bay between uh, Dragonstone and King's Landing. It's like 15 birds with one stone. You could wipe out the fleet. You could take King's Landing. There'd still be the, a lot of work to do in the wider continent, but that would be a huge symbolic win. Um, let's see. Michael, Cruisenberry. Why did the Dothraki refer to Jorah as the Andal if he's from the north? Wouldn't he be descended from the first one? Yeah. Uh, the thing about the Dothraki is they're not like up on history of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like they don't, they're not like big on like learning. Not cultured. They're not a cultured, they're not a cultured people. So to them, like everyone from Westeros is an Andal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they just don't know stuff. Uh, so they call him Jorah the Andal. Elijah. Do you think that Sam will save Jorah from grayscale by plunging a shard of dragon glass into his heart? Or maybe making him some tasty dragon glass soup? Ah. Um, well, I don't think the dragon glass thing would work. That's a reference to the way the children slash uh, the three-eyed raven saved Benjen Stark from turning fully into a white. I don't think that would work with grayscale. I think probably what we'll see is, for you book readers, we'll see a kind of repurposing of the Victorian storyline with like some of the treatments that were given to him. Bop, bop, bop. Um, Trey Kirby, my dude. Is it King's Smoot or King's Moot? It's King's Moot. Although, like, who knows? These are invented words. Just do your best, everybody, with what you have. Uh, it's not as hard as the various Targaryen names. Uh, Teresa. If Danny and John meet before his parentage is revealed, will they be allies? What if they meet after? Um, I don't think it's going to be. I think they will be allies because there's like a huge army of dead people marching on the realm. I think that Danny came to conquer the Seven Kingdoms, and several of those kingdoms are in open rebellion. The North has declared its second king in the North since Torin knelt 300 years ago, whatever. And the North doesn't look like they're going to kneel anytime soon. And I think Danny's not looking for rivals, so I think there's going to be a lot of friction there, especially if it, if it is revealed that John, if it becomes widely known that John is the son of Rhaegar. Um, that's going to, it's going to be an issue. It's not going to be easy. I don't think they're just going to be like, yeah, we're, I love you. You're, this is great. We're friends. I think it's going to be a problem. Ashley, do you find it oddly coincidental that the mothers of John, Danny, Tyrion all died shortly after giving birth to them? Great question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Zach, more likely dead dragon turned white dragon or Cersei controls dragon with dragon binding horn? The dragon binding horn, which is, I think, as does Mother Dragons Mallory Rubin thinks, that that's probably what Euron, the precious gift that Euron is going to deliver to Cersei. Um, I think we see a dragon white first. First? Uh, I think we see a dragon white. I think that's more likely, but I do think we see the dragon binding horn. Um, other things that Euron could be delivering, um, I've seen people Tyrion. Ty they say that it could be Tyrion. I'm not sure, like, how do you get him? That's kind of like the hard part that it could be Sansa. Again, like, uh, let's say it is Tyrion. Cersei would love that. But it's not like a huge win strategically. Danny still outnumbers them, has three dragons. Dragon Binding Horn could actually move the needle in an in a, in a ostensible battle between the two armies. Um, another theory I saw, which, is a, which was an interesting one that I actually like, really like, just as a thing, is someone on Twitter said, what if he finds Bright Roar, which was the Lannister family Targaryen sword that was lost when um, one of the Lannister ancestors took it to Valeria just on a mission to go find stuff and never returned and is gone. I don't think that it would be that either because remember uh, when Tywin melted down 
ice, he made two swords. Brienne has one. We imagine that the other one is still in King's Landing, right? So they have a, they have a Valyrian sword. It's not, it's not that big a deal. Matt, why didn't the three-eyed raven give Bran dark sister after we found out Valyrian still, still kills others? Does he have it? We don't know if he has it. Um, and then someone else he asked, various people have asked, the, um, the sword that Mira has, is that Dark Sister? I don't think so, because if you're like a maniac like me who watches the episode four times like in a night, um, and then the third and fourth time stopping like all the time, there's rust on the blade. If it's Valerian, it's not rusting. So I don't think it's Dark Sister. Um, Johnny Carcinogen. Will we see any hints of obsidian candle slash non-mainstream Marwin type thought going on? So yes, we will, I think. I hope we do. Hey, let me bring this up real quick. Um, I, we all knew that someone would screenshot like the books that uh, Sam is reading, Sam and Gilly are reading at the Citadel. And one of them, one of the pages mentions uh, lit candles, their sorcerers, something. That's got to be the black candles. What else could it be, right? And, and it's in like a very, it's in basically a paragraph that seems to be referencing Valeria. Next question. How long? I'll take like a couple more. Josh, what role will Valeria play in the end game? Will the Doom of Valeria play a role? Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure Valeria will play that much of a role unless, like a direct role. I think it's possible that Euron if he's gonna find the dragon binding horn, that he's gonna find it there. Um, I think we should assume that he's been there at least once. Um, will the doom play a role? Maybe in flashback, I doubt it. Bernie, how does Cersei's army compare to Danny's? Doesn't. It doesn't. Cersei's army is, she doesn't have an army. I mean, the Lannister army is in the Westerlands, so. That's far away. Would the Lannister army take orders from Cersei? It's after she blew up the Sept of Baylor killing Kevin Lannister. I think it's an open question, maybe. Um, how big is that army? It's not bigger than the combined forces of the Reach, Dorne, Danny's Unsullied, Three Dragons, Yara Greyjoy's fleet. It's just not. Plus. John's Northern Alliance, so. Um, so yeah, Cersei's like in trouble. She's got the gold cloaks and whatever Lannister people were in King's Landing. If she tried to leave the city, she'd be in trouble. Um, two more questions. Do you want to just end on predictions? Yeah. What is a prediction that I have? Yeah, for the next episode. Um, well, Nymeria, I think, because we saw it in the, <laughs> that's cheating, but, and it would be so good. Oh my God, it would be incredible. Incredible. How do you think it happened? I, I mean, like, she, Arya is, like, wandering around the Riverlands looking for people to kill and senses something or feels something or just runs across this pack of wolves. In the books, Arya keeps having these visions of a huge pack of wolves rampaging across the Riverlands with a, a big she-wolf at, at the head of it. Um, and we are obviously meant to presume that this is Nymeria. There's also reports sprinkled throughout the books of wolf, wolf attacks, these like this wild pack of wolves. So yeah, um, that would be super, super, super cool. Great. Thank you, everyone. Binge Mode will come out uh, tomorrow, I think, and watch Talk the Thrones, and you guys are the best. Thank you.